thank Justin and Daniel Burkett for being with us again. She's a very familiar face at these events. Uh, this is a, it's a great day. We love doing happy things here in the State House, which is, I think, the most beautiful one in the United States. Uh, we have a great history. We have great people. And it's always a, a big pleasure when we have a new law, something that comes into effect. Very much needed, it's very much common sense, very practical, but in some areas might even uh, mark a little bit of innovation and imagination because everybody had this. Uh, Chris Wooten uh, did a grand job of introducing this bill and getting it through the House and the Senate in record time. We appreciate his work and now we have the You know, it, the honor that it is to stand here is, is pretty amazing, but I just want to tell you a quick little story. Because when I was a child, my dad always worked on everything, and I was the whole delight guy. Nothing could get done. My dad had the infinite wisdom. He knew everything about it, but he had to have somebody hold the light. And I was the whole delight guy, so I knew at a young age that holding the light meant something. So I think today's word is all about faith in the light hole. I had a, a man named David Bitter standing here to my left, had faith enough in me as his representative to come up to me, he didn't know me, he came up to me and said, I got this idea, there's a little flaw in the system that I'd like to talk about. He didn't know me, but he knew that he, he had faith in what he had been told all his life, and that's to voice your concerns, and let's see if we can make it better than we found it. He said, if I get pulled over, I, I'm a deaf guy. I'm hard of hearing. If I get pulled over by an officer for a taillight being out, I don't know why I'm being pulled over. And if that officer tells me to do something, I can't hear him. So now we're both scared. So it just made sense. So we took that idea and working with uh, Colonel Suedo and the DMV and the uh, uh, Department of Public Safety, all the law enforcement agencies, talking to them a little bit about how we can make a better change. So now when an officer pulls a vehicle over, there's an alert when he calls that tag in or, or keys that tag in. There's an alert that lets that officer know that the person driving his car may be deaf or hard to hear. It's a no-brainer. This is a 100% bipartisan effort. Both sides of the chamber stepped across the aisle and said, this is a no-brainer. It makes sense. So now not only will that officer be safer, but that citizen will be safer too. And in these times that we're living in today, I think we need a lot more of that. So thank you, Mr. Bitters and the uh, Deaf Association for having enough faith in me to pick me to introduce this bill. Um, more than anything, thank you to the folks that uh, are just letting me hold the light. David, I appreciate all your uh, time and effort. I, I, I didn't do all the work on this. The work is from all the folks around me. I just held the light, so I'm proud to do that today. Thank you, Governor.
is there any particular training that they already have to where they'll actually be able to effectively do that stuff towards, you know, considering that? Yeah, that's really a great question. What our officers are trained to do if they do currently confront somebody who's hard of hearing or who is deaf is, for example, to engage somebody else in the vehicle who can potentially translate for them or to use pen and paper so that they can exchange that information and answer questions. And have there been prior incidents, I don't know if you're the one to answer this, but have there been prior incidents where this has been an issue with law enforcement as someone who's deaf or hard of hearing, where it hasn't gone correctly? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Just prior incidents that you know of where it has been, been an issue before where they haven't been able to communicate and it's gone the wrong way? Not, not that I'm familiar with where it's, where it's gone the wrong way, but I, but I am familiar with the fact that those encounters do take place and they can be a little bit uncomfortable initially. It's already been outlined clearly for the person who's being stopped as well as for the officer. But certainly, I can speak from the uh, Department of Public Safety perspective. There's nothing in my, in all this now, 31 years now, in my experience, that says that there's been a negative encounter, but they can be uncomfortable, and this does go a long way in easing that situation. And, uh, Director Schrader, you mentioned that the bill could possibly expand to include other kind of considerations. Why do you say that, and what, what, where do you see that going? We've had a number of discussions. As a matter of fact, as part of the subcommittee process, there were other people that finally the light went on and said, this is really big. And, uh, and again, they wanted to look at things like the registration and the driver's license. There's no way to go ahead and put everything on there, everything you want. But within member services, for example, if we put a caduceus on the bottom left-hand corner of the window of a car, it would tell law enforcement immediately there's a medical condition that somebody needs to deal with. And they would immediately look in to the uh, member services before they get out of the car and, and confront the individual, so the person that's hard of hearing, the person that has Tourette's, the person that has ADHD, we would know the conditions ahead of time and we can operate you know, in a positive, known environment. Governor McMaster, you said yourself that this is one of those things that seems like a no-brainer. It should have already been done. What's it mean that South Carolina, I think, is sixth state to do this now, so kind of leading the way? We're leading the way. We're leading the way a lot of things. One of them is uh, economic recovery. Uh, we're leading the way in a lot of the educational work. Uh, we intend to lead the way. We have great people. We've learned that when we collaborate, communicate, cooperate among ourselves and others, we can get great things done. This is an example of that. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.